Hi, thank you for clicking on this video and today what I'm going to share with you is how to create this pneumorphic progress pie bar that we have here. So if I were to move the actual app, you could see that we have created this pneumorphic progress pie bar as close to what the designer have created for us. So it is actually functional. If we click on the play button, it ticks. And now if we reset it and we click play again, and now it takes from the start. All right, let's zoom in into the pneumorphic progress pie bar and let's see the different components that we need to create. So there are four components that we have to create. The first one is the outer circle. The second one is the inner circle. The third one is the button that we have created in the previous video the link is on the top right of this video. And lastly, the progress pie bar. All right, let's proceed. In order for you to create the outer container, what you need to do is you need to just create a container widget with maybe a height of 400. And then at the same time, we have a box decoration with the shape of a circle. And the color, we got it from using a color picker that you can use. And we have the box shadow where the top left is white and the bottom right is a darker grayish shadow. And lastly, we have a border that is surrounding the circle, which is with a width of 15. And we use the background color as the color of the border. All right, to create the inner container, what you need to do is just to have a center container with a height maybe almost half of it and a box decoration of a circle and at the same time having a border that is also 15 and it's pretty simple this two container is easy to create and have a stack on it because what we are going to do is we are going to place the progress bar on top of the container itself at the same time let's create the button in our previous video, we have created a button that is called New Start Button. So we just need to do some edits on the New Start Button. First of all, we need to get a height of maybe 95. And at the same time, let's have a color of white. And we also have to make it pneumorphic, where our box shadow will be top left white and the bottom right a dark gray color. In our previous video, we have created the icons to stop and to play. And it also has the different colors that we use for our icons. Lastly, our progress bar. We are not going to create the progress bar from scratch. I have created a video on this pneumorphic challenge where I have created a progress bar that overlaps one another. So I'm going to use that widget. So what I did was I get the progress painter and I just rename it as a pneumorphic progress painter. And inside this progress painter, let me explain to you the different things that I have created so far. So the first thing is that we have to create a gradient for our progress painter. So we are going to use the linear gradient because in the design over here, you could see that at this bottom area, it is dark. And then at this top area, it is light. So it is linear from a dark to a light one. That's why we are going to use the linear gradient. At the same time, we will begin at the top center and end at the bottom right. In the design over here, you could see the light part is almost at the center and the dark area is at the bottom right. The next thing I'm going to show you is this stroke cap. There are different shapes of the stroke cap. What I mean by that is at the end of the line or the progress bar, you could see that it is round or it is square or it is butt. <laughs> Yikes. So the butt here means that we don't have this additional padding for us to close the circle. So we will put it as round. And then at the same time, we have a painting style of stroke. We use the stroke width as our circle width that we have instantiate on top over here using our parameters, circle width. And 
In order for us to use the gradient inside our circle, we will use this setter method shader in order for us to color our progress painter. So we will create our gradient over here using our gradient class and then we will use this method called create shader which will use these rectangle boundaries. So how do we get the rectangle boundaries? It's from this rectangle bounding square variable that I have created. So you could use this rectangle from circle using the center offset size width. So it is just half of what you are going to create over here. And at the same time, the radius, which is basically the minimum between the width and height. For myself, I will either use the same width and height for the progress painter, so to not confuse. So this is just in case for us whether if we have different width and height in our progress painter. Then lastly, we have our arc angle, which is 2 times pi to the completed percentage out of 100. So this is a little bit of math, but the thing is we are using time, which is 60 seconds. So we have to calculate the time accordingly and we have to input it inside this completed percentage parameters. So since we have all of this, we are going to create our progress painter. So in this paint function that we have created inside the paint override method, we are just returning this paint that is required inside the draw arc method. So you can see the paint class that is required. Secondly, we will use the rectangle from circle and then we have the start angle and the sweep angle. So the start angle is negative pi divided by 2, which means it starts on top. And the arc angle here is basically the completed percentage of the timer that it is ticking. Then are we using the center? No, because use center is basically meaning that we will not have a donut progress painter. We will have a completed circle progress painter. So we are trying to avoid that. So that's why we will put false. And lastly, we will have a paint of, actually we don't need this start and end angle. So let's delete this. So I copy and pasted the previous project that we have done because it used a different kind of gradient, which is the sweep gradient. And that's about it. All right. So let's put our new progress painter inside. So first of all, we are going to center it. Second, we are going to put in the chow as our sized box. And let's put a height of maybe 250. And we are going to input our new progress painter. So let's put in the custom paint because the new progress painter is a extended class of custom painter. So we are required to use custom paint in order for us to use our new Morphic Progress Painter. So let's put in the painter. Let's put in new Progress Painter. So let's have our circle width to be 60 and then our completed percentage. So this is where we need to figure out what kind of percentage that we need. So let's create a percentage variable. In order for us to get a time from the timer, let's use the provider. So this requires us a timer service and we can get the duration, which is called current duration. And we can get the seconds in seconds. So it is a percentage. We have to divide it by 60 because in one minute we have 60 seconds and we are going to multiply multiply by 100. That's the percentage that we need. Let's add in our percentage variable inside our completed percentage. Let's save this if it works. Alright, so there's a bug over here because our custom pane is not exactly in the middle. So what we need to do is we need to have a child of center. And we're going to use the center widget, which is just an empty widget. So let's save this. Alright, at the same time, what we are missing was the default circle color parameter. So what we need to do is we need to add in the colors and we are going to use the transparent because if we were to put another color, for example, red, 
then you could see that it fills out the pneumorphic background. So we don't need that. So we just use the transparent. And now everything is okay. So if you press the play button, you could see that our pneumorphic progress painter is ticking and is filling up the circle. So that's it. That's how you create this timer pneumorphic app that is functional, not just UI code. So let's see if we can reset it. Click on reset and it still takes. Stop, reset. All right, that's about it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want more pneumorphic flutter challenge, click on the subscribe button and comment down below any design that is pneumorphic or nice looking so that I can have a go at it. All right, see you guys. Bye bye.